This is Gavin Newsom, the governor of California. Over the 4th of July weekend, Newsom aired a campaign commercial on Florida television for some reason. Here's a clip. It's Independence Day, so let's talk about what's going on in America. Freedom, it's under attack in your state. Your Republican leaders, they're banning books, making it harder to vote, restricting speech in classrooms, even criminalizing women and doctors. I know that was a lot to process, so let's break it down. Your Republican leaders, they're banning books. Okay, the full story is the textbooks were submitted to the Florida Department of Education for review. Out of 132 books, 54 of them were rejected. Why, you ask? Well, here's an example. According to a report by the Tampa Bay Times, this book, Thinking Quantitatively, Communicating with Numbers, uses a variety of charts and graphs where students are prompted to consider how real-life topics can be dissected and analyzed using data. Okay, so far so good. Among the issues addressed in the book's illustrations are traffic accidents, U.S. population trends, earthquake magnitudes, and the correlation between obesity and Walmart supercenters. Um... And chapter 11 titled Risk and Decision Making shows a graph of carbon dioxide emissions and takes a swipe at climate change deniers. To deny that such pollution will have any impact on the environment seems as naive as believing that cigarette smoke will not harm your lungs. The book also asks, should we vote for stricter gun control measures? Just how dangerous is our society? Does racial profiling impact police tactics such as stop and frisk? So this one was rejected, and that's fine, because opinions and editorializing about gun control and racial profiling do not belong in a math textbook for children. Now, according to the Florida Department of Education, reasons for rejecting textbooks included references to critical race theory, inclusions of Common Core, and the unsolicited addition of social-emotional learning in mathematics. So on one hand, the left will swear up and down that critical race theory isn't being taught in classrooms. But when books are removed from curriculums because CRT appears in a book, they yell and scream about book bans. Makes sense to me, what's your problem? Next, Gavin Newsom claims that Republicans are making it harder to vote. This is referring to a bill that was introduced in 2020 by Florida Senator Rick Scott that would amend the Help America Vote Act and provide federal standards regarding mail-in ballots. The provision in question states, all ballots validly cast in an election for federal office shall be counted and reported within 24 hours after the conclusion of voting on the date of the election. In reporting on the matter, WFLA claims that the bill, as written, would potentially disenfranchise many overseas and military voters whose ballots can arrive up to 10 days after Election Day, as long as they are postmarked by Election Day. However, WFLA is conflating absentee ballots with mail-in ballots. You see, when you're an overseas or military voter, you vote with an absentee ballot. The bill Rick Scott introduced isn't about absentee ballots, it's specifically about mail-in ballots. So how is a bill that went nowhere in Congress making it harder for anyone to vote? Oh right, it doesn't. Next, Newsom claims that Florida is restricting speech in classrooms. But what does this mean exactly? Well, let's find the headline that Newsom is attributing to the Palm Beach Post. It turns out that it's an op-ed written by Daniel Ulfelder. You know, the lawyer who dressed up as the Grim Reaper to shame people who wanted to go to the beach during the pandemic. I think that uh, the, the danger of bringing all the people here to our area and spreading the virus, and I think it's going to prolong the recovery we have. I made a whole video about this nut job. <laughs> you should check it out. Link is in the description. Anyway, the op-ed is regarding so-called banned books in school libraries. Last month, the DeSantis administration policy of attacking free speech and interfering in our children's education hit my home county. The Walton County Superintendent pulled a list of books off the shelves of school libraries. According to the Walton County School Superintendent, Russell Hughes, the books in question were being reviewed and reevaluated for age appropriateness and content. The books include Killing Mr. Griffin, a book about a group of students who plan to kidnap their English teacher, 13 Reasons Why, 
which follows the story of a high school freshman and the 13 reasons why she commits suicide, and Toni Morrison's Beloved, which includes infant murder, sex, and violence. You know, perfect content for a child. And this book, Sloppy Firsts, and based on the title alone, I bet you can guess that it's probably not appropriate for grade school children. But the way the Grim Reaper lawyer describes it, the books listed tell stories of LGBTQ families, racial justice, school shootings, mental health struggles, and even 9-11. And of course, Grim Reaper Lawyer isn't telling you the whole story, nor is he taking into consideration that not all of these topics are appropriate for all ages. Instead, he'd rather paint the school superintendent as a racist and a bigot. Yeah, good luck with that one. <laughs> Next, Gavin Newsom claims that the state of Florida is even criminalizing women and doctors. So first, let's take a look at the headline. Newsom is trying to paint a 15-week ban as a bad thing. This might as well be a DeSantis ad. A recent Harvard-Harris poll finds that the majority of Americans believe that there should be restrictions on abortion, including 60% of Democrats that say it shouldn't be allowed beyond 15 weeks. Not to mention that 15 weeks is three and a half months. That's a very reasonable amount of time to unpregnant yourself. As for the statement that Florida is criminalizing women and doctors, it's not quite true. According to Florida law, it's a third degree felony for a doctor to illegally perform the procedure, and that's punishable by up to five years in prison and up to a $5,000 fine. As for criminalizing women, no, it's not criminal to obtain a procedure. But by using this imagery, Gavin Newsom is not only scaremongering, he's spreading misinformation. I know, you're shocked. I urge all of you living in Florida to join the fight. What fight? Also, I thought using the word fight in politics was bad. Oh right, it's okay to say it if you're a Democrat. I urge all of you living in Florida to join the fight or join us in California, where we still believe in freedom. <laughs> Freedom of speech, freedom to choose, freedom from hate, and the freedom to love. Freedom to pay the highest individual state income tax in the country. Freedom to pay a tax of 53.9 cents on a gallon of gas, not to mention the highest gas prices in the country. The freedom to allow your car broken into and your valuables stolen. The freedom of randomly not having electricity. Plus, freedom to learn Common Core? Yeah, hard pass. Anyway, I need to point out something about the ad. The footage of the protesters, the serious women, the mixed race family, and the two women with the rainbow flag are all stock video footage available on websites like Shutterstock, Getty Images, etc. So let's see where each one was shot. According to the clip details, the footage of the women was shot here in the US, but I'm not sure which state though. However, the footage of the protester was shot in the United Kingdom. The footage of the multicultural family was shot in Portugal, and the footage of the two girls with the rainbow flag was shot in Serbia. So California is so great that to illustrate their virtue signaling, Gavin Newsom had to outsource video from overseas. Don't let them take your freedom. Don't let them outsource your video production to Serbia. So Governor Newsom, Florida is doing just fine without your help. Go worry about your own f***ing state. I'm Andrew, and I approve this message. And with that, thanks for watching, sharing, and slamming that like button. As always, be sure that you're still subscribed to the channel, and I hope to see you next time. If there is next time.